fire. Bring the heart. It's time to get loud. Let's go! Because this is Betfred Super League. Bring it on. again everyone happy new year and a very happy new season welcome along to another edition the first of 2022 of eddie and steve-o the podcast supported once again by the game's title sponsors betfred so here we are 12 super league clubs stand at the gate waiting for the off all with hopes and aspirations of getting to old trafford at the end of september for this year's grand final it's going to be one hell of a ride and we'll be following it every step of the way so let's get down to business right away by saying hello, happy new year, and more importantly, happy birthday to my old mate Stevo, because last week saw yet another milestone for him. And Stevo, I trust you celebrated royally. I certainly did, Eddie, and I never thought that this day would arrive. I've missed you. <laughs> well, that is a first. <laughs> that is a first. But happy birthday, happy new season. And here we go. More Bef television coverage than ever before. 66 first picks on Sky. Channel 4 now are in the mix with 12 games starting on Saturday. Leeds and Warrington at uh, 12.30. Premier Sports have got the championship now, including the playoffs and the million-pound game at the end of the season. The BBC have got the Challenge Cup and the World Cup. Bay in Sport in France have got the Catalan Games. Dear God, what a bonanza for <laughs> rugby league fans this is. It certainly is, Eddie. But I tell you what, halfway through the season, we'll get a few clubs saying, you know, people don't want to come and watch it live because you can get it out <laughs> on TV. Now, remember when we started at Sky? That's all they wanted to say. Oh, you'll affect it. You can't. Having these games on Friday and Sundays and Thursdays and you know, look, you fans out there, do us one favour. You know, for these people, Channel 4, Premier Sports and Sky, to give you the opportunity to see the greatest game of all, let's all get behind it. Let's get in it through it. And I think it's fantastic. But I've got one question for you, Eddie. Oh, go on. Uh, the rumours are that Sky had to drop the amount that they were going to give to Super League to around about 20, 25 million. Now, I'd like to know how much Channel 4 and Premier Sports are giving to Super League and the RFL. Because it hasn't been published. Do you know? No, not a clue. Not a clue. The, the, those sort of things haven't been published. And you've plucked out a figure there for Sky. I don't think that has ever been published either. But the feeling is within the game, within the sport, that the money from Sky has dropped a little bit. Uh, so you might be right. Sky might be the only people in the business that are actually dropping money into the coffers. I don't know. Well, we need money. We know that. We need good sponsors. We know that as well. The likes of Rugby Union, they're getting great sponsors and they're getting great coverage. We understand that as well. But I don't want to be left behind. Rugby League should not be left behind because I will always say to the day that I die, that Rugby League is far better than Rugby Union. It's a simple equation as far as I'm concerned. But let's not go back to the Eddie Stobart days or the free pizza days. You know, our game should be backed. It's that good a sport that people in the communications industry should pay to expose our game. Yeah, I think we will all say here, here to that. They're certainly paying in one way, Steve-O, because remember in 1996 when we started Super League, there was you, me, and Bill Arthur, okay? Ray French, <laughs> Ray French was on the telly, right, on the BBC. Now, 
Jamie Jones Buchanan and John Wilkin, M, uh, Jamie Jones Buchanan MBE, should I say, and John Wilkin have joined Sky alongside the regulars. Adam Hills of the Last Leg fame and Helen Skelton, Richie Myler's wife, they're going to be fronting up the channel for uh, coverage. A completely new face to rugby league, Emma Jones from Leeds United Television, will continue to work with the football club, but this is her first big job in the sport of rugby league. Kevin Brown, Leon Price, uh, Kevin Sinfield, they're all involved. And I've counted up. There were, as I say, there was you, me and Bill, right? Now... Bill, John Wells, Terry O'Connor, Barry McDermott, Phil Clark, <laughs> Brian Carney, John Wilkin, and Jamie Jones Buchanan. They've replaced us three with eight. So there's some money been spent there, let me tell you. But let's not forget about Jenna at Sky. That's nine on the screen at Sky. I forgot all about Jenna. <laughs> Dear me, let me give my wrist a slap. That's a disgrace. Fancy missing Jenna out. All the people that you've mentioned, uh, they know the game. They've played the game, they understand the game, and that's what we need. We've got to make sure. You, look, you, you and I were all farts. We, we did well for a while, but <laughs> the, you know, the world goes on. The world has got to go forward. And I think it's wonderful, you know, that we've got the likes of Wilkin, Jamie Jones Buchanan, Kevin Brown, and all those sort of things, because the, it, it, it can be a young game. Of course it is. And like everything else in the world, you know, we retired and new people have to come through. So you said it before, it's a bonanza for the people who love rugby league. The Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, she is now the patron of the Rugby Football League and the patron of the Rugby Football Union. Now, it was announced last week, delighted to hear this news because I'm a massive royalist and I know that you are as well. Uh, I wonder when Kate Middleton is going to come up and uh, have a game uh, to look at at Salford or Castleford or Wakefield or Wigan or Warrington the list is or Hull do you think she's going to think she's going to step outside of London and, and get north and see these matches well I'm sure she will I mean uh, I've been looking for the publicity and uh, I say look welcome to our fold she's got to make sure that she gives a lot of attention to our game of rugby league and, you know, maybe we might invite her to a local derby. You know, Dewsbury versus Batley. I mean, that will be a, a humdinger for her to come and see her first live rugby league game. And in fact, my old club, I might even bring them up and say, look, get, get a message out and invite her to that big game, Dewsbury versus Batley. You, you, it'll be full. The place will be full. Well, it will. Uh, I rather fancy, though, that the only games that she will attend, uh, and I'm being devil's advocate here, I think she'll go to Wembley for the Challenge Cup final. I hope that she presents the trophy. That will be back to royalty presenting the, the silverware. And I think she'll probably attend the World Cup as well, because that, that takes in every, every game from every uh, facet of the community. She will be at those matches, I'm sure, for the World Cup. Well, I hope so, and she should be. It's as simple as that. I have to pull you up about this, Eddie. Uh, she won't be going to Wembley for the, the Challenge oh, Cup no. this year. She'll be, go she'll be going to Tottenham. Yes. I'm, I'm leading, 1-0. I've got you. Yes. <laughs> well done, well done. Right, on to the field of play. Super League starts this weekend. St Helens going for an unprecedented four Super League titles in a row. Can they do it, do you think? Yes, I do believe that but, they can do it because they're a very, very well-balanced team. They've got a few golden oldies, but they've got youngsters coming through. They've, they've thought it out probably 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, where they, they know that there's certain positions that Roby, you know, it, it'll give one more year, etc. But they've got to have the backup and not be caught out like a lot of clubs in the past We've seen that happen. They've just taken their eye off the ball in regards to who's coming through when these guys get to 30 or 31, 32. And I've looked at their development and their junior development, and it's no fluke that they are looking to get forward on the trot. No, absolutely. I mean, Jack Wellsby, for instance, will take over from the departed Lachlan Coote at fullback, and Lewis Dodd is going to come in and take over from Theo Farge. So, you know, they, they look... They look like they're meaning business yet again, don't they, Saints? No question. 
And they're very quiet about it. They don't boast. They don't say, you know, we're going to go with it. It's everyone else is saying, can they make it four? Look, they have their feet on the ground. They know exactly how to do it. You don't win three on the trot without having good backup, good coaches, a good team, a good president, a good chairman. It all helps. It's getting that mixture right. And they've done that for three years on the trot. And they will start favourites. And I have a funny feeling that Warrington may just have that little bit of an uplift in regards to having a Yorkshire man as their coach. <laughs> yeah, well, they are. They're starting a new era, aren't they, with Daryl Powell in charge. Yeah. I mean, they, they will be among the usual suspects. Uh, Wigan, Warrington, Leeds. Uh, Wigan with Matty Pete as well. He's taken over from Adrian Lamb. Lee Breers, Sean O'Loughlin, Sean Wayne, heavily involved. Um I just wonder who will break into the pack this year because Catalan made it to Old Trafford last season, and of course Hull KR got to within eighty minutes of a grand final. Where, where will the where will the outsiders come from? Well, you have to say outsiders, but I've got to mention Catalan. Uh, they they played superbly last year. Uh, a lot of people said that they had the advantage of, of uh, but they were winning away from home. This was a, this was a. a 100% change from what they'd had in previous years. They said that, oh, you know, they'll win at home, but they struggle away. That they didn't. And they, they made it to the grand final and, and they were in super. I mean, they could have won that, Eddie. Oh, no. You know, you know, oh, no. it wasn't, it wasn't just a, a, a runaway win by, uh, by St. Helens. Um, they were in it right up until the end. Uh, they'll be there and, and thereabouts because of the, but the biggest problem we've got, we've got a new team from France, and it looks as though uh, they might have only half a team because of the COVID situation. A lot of the players don't want to get vaccinated. I, I, I can't believe it. I think I, it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Well, it is, and, and the French authorities have said, of course, that you can't come into the country, you can't go out of the country unless you are fully vaccinated. Now... I think we're right to be concerned about Toulouse. You know, they, they've lost uh, Mark Corellia, their star man, and at least three others, including Jonathan Ford, because of these vaccination protocols. They were the heartbeat of the team last year, so they won't be playing. And, and I don't say this, really. We're not going to face another Toronto Wolfpack shambles, are we? Please. Well, I hope not. Uh, I think that we've got a far better situation regard to to lose um a lot of people didn't like to the fact that they had to fly a, a fairly long way on an airplane to sort of play over there um maybe the french rugby league uh, will be able to help them hopefully that, that they can bring in quite a few players uh, to from the ones that you said i was going because look it'll be a breach of their contract in regards to the fact that uh, you know that they, they've made it quite clear You've got to be fully vaccinated, otherwise you can't you can't play. The, the trouble is, Steve, although it is still very much regarded as a personal choice, despite our own views about it, people can say they're going to have the vaccine, they can say they're not going to have the vaccine. If they're not going to have the vaccine, obviously there's going to be trouble ahead. I, I, I'm just worried to death that we will, we will see to lose not seeing this season out. I mean, that would be a tragedy, wouldn't it? Oh, of course it would. I mean, uh, here we are talking at the start of the program in regards to, you know, <laughs> wonderful exposure, so many new new commentators, so many people putting the effort into the game and uh, Channel 4, Premier Sports, uh, Sky Sports. And here we are in a situation whereby we can't really, we can't really back these people because of the, the, the legislation in regards to the fact and they won't be able to travel over overseas to to the UK so it is a big problem I, I, I can't see how we can get out of it unless you know common sense but we can only speak for ourselves Eddie in regards to the, as far as I'm concerned these people these great doctors these wonderful scientists have created something that has prevented us from virtually wiping most of the people off the face of the earth we'll just have to wait and see how the Toulouse business uh, pans out um, 
I don't know what's happening in East Yorkshire, Steve, but all the stuff I read from Hull and Hulkingston Rovers seems to indicate that both clubs have got a bit of an injury crisis already. A ball's not even been kicked yet. And they're talking about missing six or seven players on the opening weekend. What's going on? What's in the air in East Yorkshire, Steve? Uh, well, I think it's this warm weather. I mean, this is <laughs> no seriously. This this has got to be the best winter. Not that I've been here so many times in winter time, but but no. this has got to be. I mean, the sun was shining today, and and it, it was fantastic. Oh. It's, uh, it's not shining. It's not. It's not shiny here all day. It's been. It's been freezing cold yeah, for the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But week. you're in. You're in Leafy Lane, Cheshire. Yeah, well, and you've got it. Look, the, come come over the Pennines. Get a bit of sunshine. <laughs> sunshine. <laughs> no, look, look, uh. it, it, it is. It is a problem because. Um, uh, sometimes a, a change in training techniques just uh, just becomes a mishap. Sometimes you can start with you know maybe ten players missing from your squads. Uh, they just gotta just gotta live with it or whatever. You know it's um, it's very very difficult. And I suppose in many ways, I'd like to see both the whole clubs do exceptionally well this year. I I, I always feel I mean look, Hulkings and Rover they were outstanding. Uh, when you look through their uh, their playing roster last year, it wasn't though you were talking about packed out with international stars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They just played really, really good, solid, and and an attractive rugby league. And I'd like to see the black and whites get back up there and everything. It's, uh, uh, we just need it. We need a, need a good competition. You know, it's been up and down over the last two years because of the pandemic. Let's hope that. All the teams play exceptionally well and not have a problem, though you have mentioned to lose could be that problem. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, I'm just looking at the, the ins and outs of the two whole uh, clubs. There's been some movement, actually, there's been some movement of players throughout the game during the course of this winter, but Hull have had a big turnover. Hull KR have as well. We look at this stage of, of any uh, year and we think who will be the bright sparks? of the new season. I'll give you two names, Steve-O. Mikey Lewis at Hulkingston Rovers. Thought he was outstanding last yep. year. Yep. And Will Price. Will Price at Huddersfield. There's two contenders. I think they qualify for Young Player of the Year. Yeah. They're, and let's hope that we can find some new young talent coming through and through. Uh, I spoke to Richard Agar a couple of weeks ago and uh, he's, he's extremely confident that they can go somewhere because he reckons that he's got at least five or six super young kids coming through. And maybe, you know, maybe some of the other clubs might start looking towards uh, the championship because we talk about who's going to be relegated and all that, but it's got to be a great competition. Who's going to be promoted? They've already started that in their second week, uh, you know, that everyone's saying Featherston and Lee will be the ones. Well, uh, I, I thought Bradford, Bradford just were outstanding when they played their first game at Dewsbury. I was there at, at, for the Dewsbury game because we, for the first time in 15 years, we had the old players. The Past Players Association has finally found itself again. And I have to thank one former rugby league player and that's Keith Mason he has worked hard to ensure that that day was a success and boy how a success was it 90 over 90 former players attended it was sensational they got hammered Bradford won 46-16 but to see so many old players and well done Keith for getting so many and, and I really hope that we can continue on. Let's not just forget about them. They're still part of the great game. Yes, they are. And I know that you always, always talk about the heritage of the game, your past players at Dewsbury and, and you know, Penrith and places where you, you, you have played, Great Britain Lions Association. You know, the game is built on memories and history, isn't it? But um, sadly, that doesn't seem to bother the people in charge of the affairs in Huddersfield. The council, apparently has torpedoed the idea of the Rugby League Heritage Museum making a welcome return to the town at the old George Hotel. Now, I know you are seeing red about this. It not only saddens you, but it annoys you too, doesn't it? Of course it does. I mean, you know, I opened the, the museum. Uh, it, was, it was running for nearly 10 years before, sadly, uh, the George Hotel sort of collapsed. There was no, not enough business. 
And within 18 months, or past 18 months, um, Huddersfield Council, they've said that they, they want to back it. Fantastic. Great news. And yet, now they've turned into turtle. They want to try uh, and build it outside of the town. I, I, I can't seem to understand or get through to people that when our game was born, it was at the George Hotel in 1895. Now, whilst I was running that museum, Eddie, I had people from all over the world. Now, they didn't just come to Huddersfield to just have a photo taken outside or go down and see see my collection. They brought they brought dozens of people into the town of Huddersfield. And I can't understand the council that has got this jewel of sport on the doorstep right opposite the railway station. Is the red tape that is stopping this? I mean, is the, is the planning uh, regulations that are stopping it? Or is it just simply a question of the council won't put the money where the mouths used to be? Well, you said it right away. They've opened their mouth, and now they've realised it's going to cost a lot of money. But that's only from their side. Is it private money that will rescue this, do you think, rescue this plan? Well, obviously private money would always be good. Listen, if they didn't want it, did they expect it for nothing? I mean, they got the government grant that they're redoing the George Hotel because they're, over the years, I mean, it, 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 it was just falling apart. So that's going to cost a lot of money. And they're even sort of suggesting, you know, do you, do you, ta you know, taxpayers, etc., living in Huddersfield, want to put, fork out this type of money? They've got it all wrong. Well, as I say, it's a shame, and you never know. You might, you might get your heritage museum back at at the George. Let, let's keep, let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Um, Steve, or something else that saddens us at the moment. We can't still talk about the great game coming back together again just yet. Remember at Old Trafford last October, the grand final, I interviewed Ken Davey in the room, the interim Super League chairman. He said that a deal was imminent with the Rugby Football League and the coming together of Super League and the RFL, the joining up again of the game, should be sorted out by Christmas. Well, here we are. We're on the eve of a new season, middle of February. Nothing's been sorted out. What's the delay all about, do you know? I wish I knew. I wish I could come out with a, an exclusive and sort of say that yes they've signed it they're all coming back together look I dwell back on remember down in Australia they had the split in Australia they actually formulated two divisions and it was just an awful mess it was all about money players were getting absolutely fortunes offered to come here don't go with the NRL side go with the Murdoch side go with this uh, it was an absolute mess and it was always going to be a mess until finally, guess what? The two organizations said, this is stupid. Let's create and let's get back to business together. And they call it the NRL. And you think that they've made a success? Oh, yes, they've made a success. Because Channel 9 have just signed a document, 2027, a five years extension on the NRL at a cost of $650 million. Now, quickly, that's that's £300 million. It works out somewhere around about uh, 80 to $90 million per year to make sure that the NRL is strong. And that's now why they're looking to introduce the Dolphins, the Queensland Dolphins, hopefully in 2023. And there's also a suggestion that by the time 2028 comes around, there will be another team entered into the competition. Forward thinking, yes. But you look at that $650 million, Eddie, and you think, where have we gone wrong here? Well, you do wonder that. Uh, I mean, we talked about the, the TV uh, pot dwindling up here in, in the UK and in Europe. Uh, the gap, Steve-O, uh, seems to be getting wider and wider and wider between the two uh, north and southern hemispheres of this game. Well, when you look at the fact that that sort of money is being paid, it's not just for the top clubs. It's not just 
for the top players. It's right down to the bottom of the ladder. This is not the tip of the iceberg situation. This is what's underneath the water. A lot of that money will be put towards schools, junior development, amateur clubs, help in every possible way. And when you're looking at $150 million per year, then it's a green light to make rugby league another great sport down in Australia. And we seem to have lost our way. Well, maybe that's why these negotiations between Super League and the RFL are taking such a long time. Because I've got here a quote that I've read from the RFL chairman, Simon Johnson. He says that they're making good progress, but it is taking time because they don't want to have to do this again. He says they're after a comprehensive arrangement that they hope will endure, but he is reluctant to commit to a definite date. They are clear that the whole game must benefit and support what they're doing. Get it right, he says, and they'll maybe get a structure that might enable them to bring in a major partner. In other words, get it right, get a structure that works. And perhaps, perhaps he's seen what's gone on in Australia and he's hoping against hope to do something similar up here. That indicates to me one thing, that there's somebody or some part of the negotiation just does not want to combine that wants to keep them separated is it from the nrl or is it from the super league why can't they come to an arrangement teddy what what is holding it back the two sides seem to say you know ken david last october simon johnson now they're making progress they're going to come together can't put a time limit on it still but they hope, fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. I've got my toes crossed. You, you name it. <laughs> it, it but it, it's just ludicrous, isn't it? To think about it. But I'm making an appeal now. Get it done as quickly as possible. You know, we could have started our season next weekend. Super League. This has got it now. We're all together. We're in it together. Blah, blah, blah. And yet, once again, we've missed a golden opportunity. Well, hopefully we won't miss a golden opportunity come the end of the year because, God willing, it is World Cup year. All parties have signed up to it now. Hopefully no postponement worries this time around. But the one, the one worry that I've got is the hundred and, what is it, $300 billion knocking around in Australia. What chance have England got to win the flipping thing if, if they've got all this money and they've got so much resource to bring up to uh, to the World Cup in this country well there is one good thing you talk about having so much money and having so many great players they can only select so many Eddie <laughs> yeah I know and, and, and quite and quite often in the past um, they haven't made the best selections for a tour inside I think that we've been prone to do that in the past and it, it, it hasn't proved successful. Uh, I'm just hoping that they don't pick the best side available. Um, I don't want to say that, you know, some of the great stars get injured or whatever. So one thing we have in our favour is that we will be playing on home turf. And yep. I, 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 that is a great advantage. That will be a great advantage. And I, I'm confident... Uh, we'll make a, a, a good fist of it, a really good fist. I was just going to say, talking of World Cups, and this will this will go down well with you, I know. Wonderful memories for you personally. 2025, the next World Cup, will be held in France. That's wonderful news for the game in France again. It certainly is, and I, I do hope that one of the games is going to be played in the, the Champagne area. <laughs> that will, that <laughs> will fit it nicely. Listen. I can see what's coming. I can see what's coming. The steam no, old bus tour. <laughs> I'm already still around in 2025. You're clocking on by then. I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm already arranging the uh, the travel to get. The, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, I tell you what. If you want to come on Eddie and Steve-O's tour. To oh, the, I'm involved now. Am I? Yeah, the World Cup. For, well, you're the good-looking one. Uh, <laughs> for the World Cup in France, 2025. Come on, you people out there. I will listen. I, I will accept five hundred pounds as a deposit. It will be safe. <laughs> it will be safe, and I'll keep it. <laughs> yeah, I know hey. exactly where you'll keep it. I know exactly where you'll keep it in your back pocket. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon. You can't say this. <laughs> you, you you'll can't have say it in this. your back pocket. You will. You will. 
There'll be no well, government uh, bond for you, let me tell you. The, the thing is that most of it will be played down in the south of France, which it, which It'll is good. And, and, and Eddie, you know as well as I do, we, we love going down there. I mean, it's, it, be, it, it really will be fantastic. And the, the French public uh, will embrace it. I think it's I think it's will. one of the, I think it's one of the best news that we've had in rugby league ever since they said that the 2021 World Cup will be played in 2022 and I'm I'm looking forward to that because it's 50 years at age you well know I don't want to Indeed. say any, anything else 50 years what a great anniversary since we won it and I think that we can we can upset the odds the Aussies Indeed. the Aussies will be odds on favourites we know that but they were in 1972, and they didn't win it. No, they didn't. And that, mate, that, that means you were 25 when you were a World Cup winner. Is that what you're telling us? Today? You must have been. Sorry, I think I've lost you there, Eddie. <laughs> Hello? I tell you Hello? what, you've got, Hello? Good, you've got a good memory, you, you me? have. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I know, yes, I have. I, have, uh, I, have. I can. It. It'll be called the Ooh La La Tour. The Ooh La La. Uh, our tour is the Ooh La La yeah, tour. Is that Ooh La La? Put well, La 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 is yeah. Liverpool for lad. So I'll I'll be the La. You can be the Ooh La. Okay, I'll be the yeah. La La. Right. Okay. I tell you what. Anyone, <laughs> anyone that seriously, anyone who's never been to the south of France and always thinking that uh, you know they'd like to go there, to mix a World Cup with with some of the the, the, the finest food you'll find in the world and the wines. Are just outstanding. I could carry on, what but a, I won't, Eddie. <laughs> oh, I know you could carry. What a gastronomic trip this will be! I, I remember when we were we were on Sky and we were heading to the south of France. The the match on the Good Friday finished mid afternoon, and before sun had set, you were on the plane, and then we had to try and prize you back out of France to get you back for the the <laughs> next weekend. They they couldn't get shut of you. They really couldn't. Well, the hospitality is very, very good out there. I know. Very, I know. very I know. good. You, lo you love the wine, you love the food. Look, I I'm sorry to, to bring us back down to earth with a, a heck of a bump, um, but how sad were we to hear about the passing in the past week or so of Desi Drummond, the Lee uh, and Warrington legend at the tender age of just 63. He played in Lee's title-winning side of 81, first title for the club in 75 years. He was in the BBC uh, TV programme Superstars, where he gained national acclaim. He, his time for the 100 metres in that programme would have got him into the 1984 Great Britain Olympic team. He's believed to be the only man ever to catch Martin afire with a tackle from behind. Martin was ahead of him. He made up the ground. And Martin, with his speed, uh, you know, like Martin, uh, he was absolutely legendary. Des Drummond, RIP, Desi. Yes, uh, it, it, it was really sad news. It, uh, it certainly upset me because not only was he a great player, Eddie, he was a great character. If ever a guy loved rugby league, because every time he, I never saw him get angry, I never, it, it, it just, when I watched him play, it was as though he was having the time of his life. It was, it, it was fantastic to watch. And as you say, he was. talk about speed. Oh, tremendous. It was quicker. And hard as nails, what a tackle! What a tackler he was! You know, yeah, if you yeah. got hit by Des Drummond, you knew you'd been biffed. You really did. You really did. <laughs> oh, oh the, great, the, the, great, the, yeah. Great guy. And, uh, as I say, it it is sad, and um, uh, as you say, rest in peace. Indeed, indeed. A bright note to end, though, Stevo, as we say, many congratulations to our pal Kevin Sinfield, OBE. He picked up his honour uh, since we were last podcasting. A great and deserved gong he has got. And he says that there's yet more fundraising for Rob Burrow and the MND charity to come. He's already raised millions. So our campaign, Steve-O, goes on in 2022. Arise, Sir Kev. Sir Kev. That is for sure. And do you know, Eddie, I'm going to say something now. Uh, I'm, I may be wrong, but I've just got a funny feeling that in a few years' time, that man will come back into rugby league in some form. Give him the keys to the door. Give him the, give him the open opportunity to come back and help the game deep down that he loves more than any other sport. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, there we go. That's uh, Well, we've had an, an awful lot to talk about. 
uh, and we're all ready for the new season, which begins this weekend. St. Helens have won it already, according to Steve-O, so there you go. Mind you, you said that last year, and you approved right, weren't you? I said that year before as well. You approved right. Did you say it the year before that as well? I probably did. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the TV bonanza is about to get underway. We'll see you in a week's time, Steve-O. Take care, top man.